Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Caleb. In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the differences between primitives and objects. But, you know, you might as well not even be wasting your time here if you're not going to be able to get a job in the industry, right? And one of the best ways to do this is to go through a coding boot camp. Check out our beautiful sponsor, Dev Mountain. I'll leave a link in the description. They are a serious web development bootcamp, and their goal is to help you take concepts and experience and convert that into a really good job in the industry. A lot of good companies will go for people from boot camps because they have serious hands on experience versus people that watch a bunch of tutorials or go to school. You know, tutorials are great, but it doesn't really help until you put that into real world application, which is what Dev Mountain's going to help you do. This is an in-person camp, which I'd recommend, but they also have online stuff if that's not going to work for you. They have content in web development, iOS, user experience, and more. So check them out, guys. Let them know that I sent you, and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. And then you could send that $250 bucks to me so I can get some pizza. Lots of lots of pizza. Okay, so what is the difference between a primitive and an object? First thing, which I mentioned in the previous video, is that primitives are immutable. So that means when we do something like x equals 10, and then x is actually 5, whoops, is 5, well, it's basically throwing out the value 10 and giving it a new value 5. Even with strings, what this means is that if we're doing some kind of function to alter a string, it's not really altering the string, it's just throwing the old one out and giving you a new string of the new value. Pretty simple concept, but also pretty important to understand. Why exactly is this important to understand? Well, a lot of the methods we use in JavaScript that work on primitives are going to return a new primitive. For example, let's say we have let my name be Caleb. And we say my name dot to uppercase. Well, this isn't gonna do anything. See, if we console log this, and I'm gonna put this all inside of a block, if we console log my name, do a refresh, we still get Caleb in lowercase. What this function does is it actually gets a new string and it will return it. So that means we need to reassign it to something. So we could assign it to the same variable and now it should work. So now Caleb is in all caps. Zoom in for you there. And hopefully you caught something. In the previous video, I mentioned that primitives do not have methods. Yet string is a primitive and we're calling a method to uppercase. Well, I'm not lying, I'm not fibbing. <laughs> There's just something going on behind the scenes that we need to understand. And this is one of the big differences between primitives and objects. This happens for primitives, but it doesn't need to happen for objects. The primitives also have an object counterpart. So for example, if we uh, get rid of this here, we could say something like let your name equal new string, like so. And then in here we could pass in your name. These are two different things. So for example, we can get the type of my name and we can get the type of your name. You can see my name's a string and yours is just a stupid object. Part of the reason that the primitives have an object counterpart that works similarly but is technically an object and not a primitive is because these can have properties and properties allow us to do cool things. When we access a property on one of the primitives, such as my name dot to uppercase or whatever you click, what's actually happening behind the scenes is that my name gets wrapped or boxed inside of an object. And then when it's done, it turns it back to a primitive. I know it sounds kind of stupid, but that's just the way it happens. <laughs> so we start as a primitive and then it converts it to an object, runs the method and then converts it back. So this is kind of what's going on behind the scenes, if you wanted to think about the process. So when we call a method to uppercase, what's happening is it's boxing it inside of a string, it's calling the method, and then it's getting the, the primitive value back. We don't actually have to type these three lines, this is just for our backend knowledge. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. So to conclude, primitives do not have properties or methods. When you call a property or method on it, it's getting boxed as an object, it's calling that method, and then it's converting it back to a primitive. We talked about how we can create a primitive-like object, but not quite. It's still an object using the new string, for example, and you could also do new number and so forth. These are going to give us the object version of the types, and we can convert back to the primitives by using the, the method value of. And then you'll need to assign that to something. You can get the type of these just for testing using the type of method. So this might bring up the question, when should we use the primitive and when should we use the object? For example, should we do it like the way we did my name up here? Or should we do it the way we did this string down here, Claire? 99% of the time you're going to want to use the primitive. 
All the object stuff is going to happen behind the scenes, so there's not a lot of reasons to use the object alternative. That's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're going to dive into the numeric data type and get our hands wet with that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to learn a lot of cool stuff. So be sure to check it out. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed the series, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah.